What is up, guys? Welcome back to MLG Winter Championships. I'm JP McDaniel. And I'm Rob Simpson, and this is Championship Sunday. We are moving in to the Championship Losers Round 4. Something like five, that, man. Five, four. That's right, four. So that means that we are already at the top 16 of this event, JP. Yeah. And uh, from here on out, I mean, pretty much expect only incredible games. Yes. I mean, these are the best of the best here out of a huge, huge player pool. Uh, probably one of the best, I think, the uh, MLG, just as a tournament, has ever, ever seen. So coming up, we've got Oz going up against Pult. Right, speaking of incredible. Yeah, this, I mean, Pult basically just an incredible, incredible Terran player, mm -hmm. and Oz just an incredible, incredible Protoss player. Yep. So we'll see here as uh, let's take a look at the stats for Oz. Of course, he is just so, so damn good against Protoss. Uh, versus Terran is statistically his worst matchup, but don't let that guy or don't let that fool you. Mm -hmm. He is really, really, really good. Of course, a member of FXO, and uh, not not Z. It's FXO Oz. He's trying to be cute. It's very distracting. Know, it's there. so it's so smart. When I, I I I mean, I can imagine that almost everybody that sees his name just thinks that his name is going to be Z. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, and on the other side, his his opponent, Polt. Now Polt played. Polt, Polt showed up. That's fine. Still going to talk about him. Polt showed up and had to play through the open bracket. He actually ended up getting knocked down by Chef, which yeah. was a really big win for Chef. And then uh, Polt, Polt was in the lower bracket because of the way that seeding works. That means that Polt then had to play through these lower rounds. This The seeding is actually so complex. Yeah, it's it is. It's so man. smart, but it pretty, John Nelson well, is a madman. You have to have the human, the human computer, a.k.a. John Nelson, yeah. to figure it out. So. Uh, both players are ready here. We're going to go ahead and get this PVT started. First map will be Antigua Shipyard. And, you know, we actually just casted a PVT here between Zaka and the Muslim. And game one, not all that one-sided, pretty competitive. Game two, I felt like Zaka was just in control the entire, entire match. Yeah, Zaka did a great job just getting out in front of his opponent. He, It seemed like it was very much Zaka's game the entire time. He had a strategy that he was going to stick to anyway. We saw him preparing uh, early on in the game. He ended up getting out that double forge and just continuing to pump out his ground unit upgrades. He had just so many zealots on the field, and it was just too much for, for the Muslim to deal with. But this, this is another story, and the story starts here on Antigua Shipyard. So playing as the red Protoss up in the upper left-hand corner of the map, representing Team FXO, Oz. His opponent playing for Team SCV Life, a.k.a. TSL. As the Blue Terran, we've got Polt. Now, last game we saw, or excuse me, last match, we saw that uh, the Muslim and Zaka played very macro-oriented. This game, I wouldn't be at all surprised if, you know, one of these Koreans just played so much more aggressive than those two players. Well, uh, th I mean, that's that's what happens, right? Because essentially the way that a metagame is going to evolve is that you have to get down all of your base mechanics before you're fully able to micro everything after you have it on the field. And just because of the, the training environment that they're oftentimes in and just really pro players in general, when you make 90% of your play automatic, you can then use so much more of your brain to do creative things. Right, right. But at the same time, I mean, the builds that Zaka and the Muslim did are just your your tip-top standard safe builds. I mean, they're, they're not really risky whatsoever, unless you go for something like a Nexus or a Command Center first. If you get out that uh, gateway and get out that Rax, you can easily defend here. So we're about to reach that uh, point where you will find out if Pult is going for something like that. And a little bit off here for Oz if he's going to be going something uh, like that one gate expend. Yeah, well, Pult is going to be saving up for that command center, most certainly going to go down. The question will be whether or not he starts it before the orbital command. Yes, he's actually going to start his orbital command first as he lays down that second supply depot and now moving out his first SCV to figure out what Zaka's up to. Yeah, he's actually 100% going for that uh, CC first here. And uh, Oz, on the other hand, he's going to send out that first zealot. And the already mining gas, of course, will get that stalker out here in just a second. Now, you know, I think this is uh, one of the first times I've ever casted Pulse, but he just has such a strong, strong following and such a strong showcase that we've seen at all these events and over at the GSL as well. So uh, here's the command center being started. He actually opted. Did he scout? Yes. So mm -hmm. because he didn't see, I believe, his opponent's forces down on the low ground or a nexus just yet, 
Uh, he's actually building his command center in the main base instead of out here. He already had an SCV placed to do so, and he decided to pull it back. Right, it's just better to take the safe decision. Oz can do some sneaky things. I mean, as most of these players have just so many tricks up their sleeve. And there we see that Zealot would have actually made it down there and been able to harass that SCV just so hard. And now, Polt doesn't have to be afraid of this. He can actually just chase down that Zealot because there is no way that when controlled correctly, a Zealot can kill any of those Marines. Yeah. Yeah. So here goes Oz. He's going to be going for a Nexus as well. So once again, both these players just opening up with that very safe, very standard uh, economy-based uh, build that we saw uh, the Muslim and Zaka do as well. So first gas now being added on here for Polt, already uh, adding on his second and third rack, not going for that uh, four racks opening or anything uh, like that because he really doesn't know what his opponent's up to at this point. He knows that he hasn't added on any gates because he, I believe, uh, scouted the expansion here real quick. No, but he basically mm -hmm. kind of saw that there's not an extra gas or anything like that, and uh, he's not going to be really all that fearful, especially after seeing this small little attack. And here we saw Oz poking up just a little bit, but of course the Marines thwarted that assault. Now, Oz was not able to see the additional barracks added in the base, so really Oz is just completely in the dark. He can probably assume that his opponent does indeed have a second orbital command. Maybe. He but should. really, aside from that, he doesn't have any other information. Yeah, I mean, he only saw Marines up on the high ground. He thinks, well... Maybe he's going for some Banshee play. I highly, highly doubt it, though. And, and with this robotic facility, he's got to be fine getting the Observer out anyway. So yeah. And the, the Marine count would be a little bit high to be doing anything other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If he was doing anything like a 111, he would have already saw a reactor as well as a factory somewhere with that little attack. So Bunker going down here for Pult. Pretty much uh, th it's just playing by the book, guys. I mean, there's nothing crazy going on whatsoever. Uh, once Oz gets, gets this robotic facility out, we'll see... Uh, the couple of observers, and once he really sees what his opponent is doing, that's when this match will actually start to unfold. I want to point out how creative this pylon placement is, because he's actually got this one pylon. Oh, I thought that it was double powering this one on the on the far left, but it's not looking like. Maybe it's far enough in there. Uh, like, I think it's off by not. like one hex. Okay, one unfortunate. Hex. So that actually means that that one pylon is powering too many things. Yeah, I mean, he's got three gates on that, and. Uh, robotics facility only being powered by this as well and the side core only being powered by that pylon not not the the biggest thing but th the way that it's laid out honestly uh it, it is kind of obviously advantageous to be able to warp in over here on the low oh ground yeah. uh so here's the probe it's going to go ahead and scout pulse and see that he is completely walled off knows that that expansion is up 100 percent and uh, i believe the observer is it already out see here real quick going into the attack. Yeah, there's yes, one out in play moving across the go. center of the map. He's going to be able to see all of those Marines moving, which means that that could trigger him to defend. Now, he also had the Zelnaga Watchtower control. Pult did not even bother trying to walk around the center of the map. Now, Pult's going to be hitting a pretty comfortable timing here. His stim will be finishing up just a few seconds after he reaches across the center of the map, although it seems as though he expects Oz to know that he's coming, and maybe he's going to wait for his medevacs. We see the starport starting. He's also got a reactor there as well. So he's going to be double pumping those medevacs and waiting for his shields to finish on it. Yeah, and the scary part about engaging right here is this ramp is relatively small. I mean, it will take three force fields to wall it off, but you can split a Terran army in half and uh, really fight uh, something easier to take on with a less, uh, less sizable army and then just take out the rest as well right after that. So uh, he's checking over here with the Marine for a third base. Doesn't see anything just yet. He's going to leave it there to scout out anything later in the game. A uh, small party over here for Pult. Looking around for any p proxy pylons to make sure that no DTs or any sh silly shenanigans like that aren't about to occur. Mm. And now it seems as though Oz is, is preparing perfectly for this. He's already got one Colossus just about finished up. He does have Thermal Lance underway, and given the timing of... Uh, the infantry ground upgrade. I'm not sure that Pult's going to be hitting before a second Colossus gets out. And uh, first Colossus is out. Mm -hmm. Second one should be started here pretty soon. There we go. Uh, definitely going to be Ooh, chrono boosting it. blocked, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah he's going to chrono boost that out. And uh, Pult is moving across the map here as two medevacs. Rob? This is such a big deal because Oz was supply blocked right there. Any amount 
that that Colossus has been delayed is going to hurt him so much because of Pult's timing. He's now moving across the map. He started his custom shell after build. Just look how far away that second Colossus is from finishing. He needs to have that out there if he's going to be able to fight this. Pult is also going to be able to bring in two more medevacs to heal his units very shortly as well. This push could be pretty deadly depending on whether or not we see those force fields laid down and depending on how effective the Guardian Shield ends up being. Yeah, Pult uh, already kind of planning for an escape here. He needs as many exits because of those force fields that can just really uh, be such a nuisance to deal with. So here he goes, he's gonna be walking up the ramp, scans over here, sees only three sentries and also sees them pretty far back, but doesn't want to engage just yet. With that uh, scan, did not see exactly what he wanted, and he's going to fall back at this right. point. Uh, we see right now that plus one armor and weapons are going to finish for the Protoss, and Pult is going to fall back. So the Protoss player does have Thermal Lance finished. He's warping in lots more Zealots so that he can absorb a lot of the attacks, just have that meat out on the field. He's also got Charge underway. Now what Pult is waiting for is more Vikings, right? He only has two Vikings in play right now. He's also actually finishing up an armory. What what are your odds on seeing Thor's? Uh, I mean, pretty much. He, what he what he's gonna yeah what he's gonna do with that armory is get the uh, via or the uh, ship weapon ship upgrades right most likely so he can just take down the Colossus a lot faster, especially uh, with that scan where he saw the Colossus saw that his army was a little bit mismatched and really needs those Vikings to uh, engage here. So. We're going to see, of course, uh, as we keep an eye on that factory, if that's uh, what he's going for. But I do believe it will be. Mm -mm -mm, we'll see in a minute. There's more Vikings coming to play. He did add on a second starport. You can see that three Vikings are being built simultaneously. And, man, Polt has started yet another ground infantry upgrade. That, is, that means he is going for level two. But I'm not, I don't know if it's going to be three minutes before a big engagement happens. And Oz already at 1-1 uh, one, one here. He does have Templar Tech. Uh, oh. Somewhat of a, a tech change after getting those three Colossus out. So he's trying to force his opponent into uh, just building as many Vikings as possible. So charge finished. That is a very, very important upgrade for the uh, Protoss army. That's one of the uh, reasons why a lot of Protoss open up with those Colossus first because it is kind of a safer transition. If your opponent drops at the appropriate time and so many Terrans really know that timing of the charge upgrade, that if they can get in there as it's uh, really building and about to complete, you can really just destroy a Protoss very, very quickly. So Ooh. here we go. This might be our first engagement of this match. Ooh. And no, it looks like Oz wants to fall back. Yeah, so Pult getting a couple free kills there, but his entire army is not obviously all the way up just yet. Storm has finished up for Oz, so this could get ugly for Pult. Huge scan coming down, sees the entire army. This is gonna allow uh, for Pult. Uh, oh, looks like we're waiting for server at the moment. But mm. uh, basically what that's gonna do is allow for Pult to uh, spread out and really find out what's going on. So uh, we're gonna wait for this to come back. Hopefully the game will resume here. Uh, you never wanna see a drop game. That is uh, basically worst case scenario. So Rob, right now in this game, no player is really winning. We are about to see the first big fight, mm -hmm. which would really kind of start the tale of this game in a sense. Yes, it would. I mean, really the entire game could change depending on the outcome of this match. So this is uh, incredibly unfortunate, JP. I actually think that it's probably a good idea that we oh, get we're to back. see the game finish. Boom, we are back. Oh, yes. Oh man, and Pult is moving across the center of the map now. Oh wow, and those Templar are caught massively out of position. Oh man, Pult making some big picks there, pushing his opponent. Yeah, it feels like the game kind of moved forward there in a sense. I don't know if we just fell behind or what, but we definitely missed some actions of some sort because the army was already pushing back and Pult just had such a, a strategic advantage in terms of position. He was able to snipe one of those Colossus, but now at this point, we see that the uh, Templars are out. He can get some feedback uh, onto these medevacs, and in due time, he will have Psy Storm. Oh, man. This actually makes it pretty rough for Oz. He's, I mean, he's forced into almost a full-out assault. There just aren't very many Stalkers out there, and we can see the Pult is trying to get in there. The, and as he kites with all of his ground forces, all of the Colossi 
have been taken out. Now he's trying to wrap up the rest of those Vikings. The Vikings won't have a play. It's a terribly huge roll. The Storms are being laid down left and right, and now Polt is trying to micro to the best of his ability. That charge is just able to close the gap repeatedly, but it seems as though Swift, Stim, and Concussive Shells, he is going to be able to keep those Zealots from connecting. And uh, a good little warp in there for Oz, warping in behind this army. Some force will going down, but he has cleaned up all of those Zealots, and he's cleaning up the uh -oh. rest of the army here with this small little force behind, and that is such a good deal for Polt, because right now it's 180 supply to 90. Uh, Polt can pretty much just waltz in and destroy yeah. this third base, and I think that is going to be GG. JP, you are absolutely correct. The supply tells the story. Don't even need words. Just look at the top right corner of the screen and you know exactly what's happening. Oz, in his last ditch effort, is warping against some additional zealots. He has a Colossae out there, but it falls to more Vikings. And Polt is going to wrap up this game. And going to clean up the remaining forces and finally finish that Nexus. Oh. Good game from Oz. Polt is victorious. And I, I kind of want to know what happened exactly there in the middle because there was kind of a, a weird positioning, so to speak. I, I don't know. It was a little bit different when we came back into the game. It, it seemed strange. Polt was just automatically on the offensive, and Oz was in a strange spot. He had infantry units chasing him, or chasing his Templar that had enough energy for Storm. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, we see now that Polt is up 1-0 over Oz. When we come back, we're going to be headed to game two here on day three of the MLG Winter Championships. I'm JP McDaniel. And I'm Rob Simpson. Game two is going to be on Daybreak when we get back.